unusual to see a whole arena clapping for someone to make people miss. Uh, just a show real knockout and, and a real statement. So over to you guys for questions for Connor and, and Tony as well. Connor, it was a, a real sickening knockout, as I just mentioned to Eddie then. Did you feel that the finish was going to come as quick as it did? And what was your reaction when it did happen? Uh, definitely the knockout was coming. I mean, I'm flying into the middleweights, the sparring. They're not just sparring six rounds or three, four rounds. I'm sparring 12 rounds with two different middleweights. Super middleweights, 12 minute, 12 rounds, four minutes, 30 seconds rest. So, you know, if he wanted to take me into deep waters, you know, his trainer was saying I was going to sink. Um, but, you know, talk is cheap. Talk is very cheap. Um, and, you know, just because I don't go around raving about how good I am or, you know, I'm top class and I'll just let my fist do the talking. Continue to prove the day as, uh, you know, I will be number one. And that number one spot, you know, I'm coming for it. Were you surprised that the ref actually did a count when Probably, that knockout? Yeah. It's, it was nuts, wasn't it, really? Mm -hmm. right. See that a lot, though, actually. Yeah. Very, very surprised because when you see him just go, go down. He did, he did sit up, go to sit up. Yeah. But you could see by the way he went down, I mean, he polaxed. Mm. You don't need to count when a fighter's polaxed, but. It was a scary second point of when he was and you know, like you, he was still on his feet. You could have done him again. You would have been in trouble for it, but you, it showed, showed a bit of maturity and experience that you didn't have. Well, oh, I was very close. <laughs> I was very, very close. You talk about maturity. Um, it done to me. It done me in spite still ain't there. You know, I've hit a guy before. Um, Stephen Demar hit him to his eye roll to the back of the dead, and I still want to take him out. So it ain't. Um, it's just the way I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, you know, I'd like to think I'd be the, the guy that, you know, gets down on his hands and he's straight away, but I'm in such a, an animated, aggressive state that, you know, I'm just, yeah, just still revved up. Um, but, you know, I'm glad he's okay. Um, and, you know, we, yeah, we just had a chat afterwards, so, um, I was just, yeah, just thankful cool to share the room with him. Connor, um, a lot of people, as every fight, they say maybe this one is the biggest step up for you, and, and that's what the word was with Chris Algieri. Uh, did you feel the difference in experience from your previous opponents, even though you've got that, you know, amazing knockout? No. Um, if anything, I think Formella was a little bit more trickier um, than Algieri in terms of styles. And you know, if someone was, if someone comes to win, it allows me to capitalise on their mistakes. You know, I've not only just beat out Jimmy, I've also learned in there as well. This is my education. I'm evolving. I'm growing still. And you know, that's the that's what the great thing is about my career is people have really seen um, me go from. It's very rare you get someone under the spotlight like I was and progress to world level. Mm. It's very rare because a normal person and so raw at the start and terribly yeah, yeah, raw. Yeah. You know, well, I didn't want to say. It. Didn't say. I'll say it for you. <laughs> <laughs> terribly raw, but you know we keep it moving, man. And you know, hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. I don't care who you are. If you work hard, you can do whatever you want. Just apply yourself one hundred percent. I think it's amazing if you go back to that skinny kid walking down the steps at O2. Skinny, skinny podgy yeah. kid. Yeah. Just to think that he would go on, you know. And I know there's still levels to come, but Formella. Vasquez, Granados, Algeri, just over that sort of year period, and perform the way he has, and, and headline tonight in Liverpool. I mean, he's from, you know, he's from Ilford, by Australia, by Spain. So, you know, but that, that's that's just a, a sign that the kid, he's a star. And everywhere he goes, Leeds last time out, the reception's incredible because he's so exciting to watch. I was gonna ask as well, after the fight, uh, I know you still enjoy the fruits of this fight, but the name Bruno is brought to you. I wanna see what you think of, of that as a potential next opponent. Is that something you, you wanna entertain for 2022? I'll take, I'll take Bruno out. Uh, he don't concern me at all. Uh, these fights I've asked for, I don't need to call him out on social media because I know what social media is because I get called out myself. By, other, by these bums, we get called out all the time. It's like you just got to pay no attention. So I get Bronno or Brook or Khan not entertaining the fault, but you know, I've said to Eddie, listen, if you can make it, make it. At the end of the day, money talks. So, you know, that, that's it. That's what it comes down to. You mentioned so, Bronner as well. Um, obviously, Khan and Brook, the conversation, I know, Eddie, you feel that that's just not realistic, really, is it? I don't, no. listen, I like, I like, I like him here, but he, his eyes nearly popped out of his head when I started talking about Conor Ben. He just, he doesn't want 
to face that young smoke. Do you know what I mean? And that's why he took the Kell Brook fight over the Conor Ben fight because it's a friendly affair. The two guys, it's just, it's a little go in and have a dance for several million and good luck to them, they deserve it. But it's different when you're talking about Conor and Virgil Ortiz and Boots Ennis. These are horrible, spiteful young fighters that come in to take your head off. And they won't be doing that in that fight, trust me. And that's what I said to, to Amir, you know, Amir again, that, imagine what, Ke what Conor Ben would do to Amir Khan. Oh my God. I mean, you saw that tonight, it would be, honestly, it would be over within two rounds. Two rounds. As soon as he hit him on the chin, you know, and I tell him, you don't scream and shout, but you know, as soon as he hit Amir Khan, it would just be, it would be brutal. And, um, but we'd still love the winner, you know, but I don't think the winner, you know, but I don't think the winner will fight on. Is it not something honest. you'd actually actively pursue? Yeah, we'd love to, but I just don't, tried. all those conversations, this is the last one for those guys. Um, Kel may buy a boxer, I'm not, I don't know, but this is, this is it for those guys. This is the future, you know, but we're not waiting around. Those guys are going to fight in February, then they're not going to fight again until September, October, November. We're out in the spring. So who's next? That's the question, and that's a conversation. Mm. Oh, like, listen, I mean, you know, we, we always talked about that level of Algeri, Guerrero, or, you know, and you've sort of just demolished that level. So now it's up to Tony and Charlie, and just to say, like, this is... You know, there's still two levels till World Championship. So that's really... What's how many fights are you talking about? Two, I think. Two? Two fights and then fight for the World. Because you're going to be, you're going to be 22 hours. What if they keep ending within six rounds? Don't start getting violent with me. <laughs> 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 we're talking about opponents. I don't know if you could hear it, Conor, but some of your biggest cheers tonight was your defensive work. Yeah. It's obviously the toughest thing to really learn in the sport. Did, did, did you hear that or what does it mean to you? Yeah, but I mean, when I do this day in, day out, the more opponents they bring in front of me, the more I can display everything we've been working on. It's not like I'm talking rubbish when I go, my next fight, you'll see a completely different kind of event. Because you've seen a completely different kind of event the past four or five fights. And you'll, the next fight, you'll continue to see something else because they've all got coach here. And I say coach because coach is just more than a trainer. It's just, it's just all round, you know, inside the ring, outside the ring, technique, mindset, it's, it's all one. Do you know what I mean? And he's molded me into, Tony's molded me into a world-class fighter. And I'll continue to prove it. You know, that's fine. It's fine with me, for those who, who want to keep down. I keep talking about it, that's because it just, it bothered me when I was, it really, really, really struggled when I was 19, 20, coming through, trying my hardest. You know, I just had to knuckle down and apply myself. And you know, you'll continue to see a lot more. There's still a lot more to, to go. There's still a lot more to, Learn a lot more to put on display. In lockdown, I grew apart from your dad for a long time. What means a boxer him next to you like that? <laughs> We've had a great camp. We've had a great camp. It's been nothing but laughter, laughter, and just memories being made. I mean, because obviously my dad's not here, is he? So you know, having my dad here, it's like having, it's like having my brother, a brother that I never had. It. You know, it really is is a blessing. And I messaged my dad while I was in the hotel saying, "Thank you so much, just for opening these doors." because I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for you. Yeah, I train hard. Yeah, I do everything I possibly can. But he's, he's paved the way for me. So, you know, I'll always be grateful and show gratitude to my dad for that. If the next fight is a big international opponent like Broner, are you guys going to do your best to make sure that, that fight is staged over here in the UK? Yeah, uh, Connor's boxed in America before, and he will definitely box in America again, but he's a star. Like, you know, if you look at the styles of British boxing. I know you've got AJ, you've got Fury, but this is, he's right up there. So really, we want to make sure, you know, we, we've got that period of frotch and, you know, Groves and see old big Tony down there, all oh, that. And um, now you look at the, who, who are the guys that can fill arenas? And that's Conor Ben, you know, good crowd. To, we only had four weeks to sell this show, four weeks on sale. And we had just under 7,000 in there tonight. So that's a great achievement for, for Conor Ben. Heavyweight numbers, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and really, the O2 is yeah. where we should be next. You know, that's the, will take that fight, and can you get him Yeah, he him? wants to have a fight early next year. He wants to have a comeback fight, and then, you know, but we, we, need, a, we need an opponent for, you know, I don't know when Tony and, and Charlie and Conor and um, we want to box. I'm thinking March, April. And, you know, we, we don't want to wait for people to see how they get on in their warm up fight and stuff like that. We just want a good, top 10 guy now, and someone that can help us um, 
fill the O2. And that's why Algeria was a great opponent. He's got a name, got credibility. He's a good fighter, former world champion, great resume. He's American. A lot of people tuned in uh, in America tonight to watch that fight as well. So that's all part of part of the plan. And obviously, Bruno uh, kind of brings different aspect to something that you used to in terms of that he's a trash talker, he's a character and he might use the press conferences to try and get under your skin. Is that something that you are relishing because the higher the levels go, you, there's going to be characters like that, isn't there, that, that are going to try and use the mind games? Hey, he won't want to trash talk me, mate. Yeah, he's no, good at it. Well, I'll let him know. <laughs> he don't want to trash talk me. Will you go for him in, in a verbal war? More than likely. likely. You'd you embrace that. Physical, yeah, you might get physical. <laughs> might get a bit physical. Depends how he wants to play. I think you can have your hands stuff. full there, Eddie, with that yeah, one. Sure. Get the fines ready. I mean, you look back at the, the last two years. Like COVID has, has hurt a lot of careers, but for you, you've had you had the first part of the way you were kind of locked away in the gym, and then the second part of it, you've had fight after fight after fight. Do you look back now and this being kind of it helped you in a way? Um, yeah, of course. I mean. Obviously, I've torn a tendon in my hand, I've broken my jaw. And while I've had these injuries, and COVID, for example, it allowed me to work on a lot of things. Instead of keep having to fight on shows, make weight, deal with the pressure, just focus on getting fit, I'm able to train on a full stomach. I'm able to, you know, learn, take my time, not in a rush, to work on a shot that's going to fit the style of my opponent, just work on ring generalship and, you know, work in the jab. Knowing your way around the ring, you know, the school's never out there. Tony, what's, what's your performance <coughs> tonight? Yeah, no, it was a fantastic performance. And as he said, he worked so hard to get where he is, and he's always, you know, always been in the shadow of his dad. But I think, you know, like Nigel was saying to me yesterday, this is the day that he'll come out of my shadow, and uh, I think we all saw that tonight, not just. Like the power, as you saw, his ring smarts, how clever he is. And he's, jab, he's even out jabbing Algeria, which probably no one expected. So, you know, the hard work that he's put in over the last five or six years, and that's him. You know, what it's come to now, he's a world level, top level fighter, you know, and on his way to becoming a world champion. Conor must have been nice for you in the ring when Nigel said that, look, he's, he's not my shadow anymore. Nigel, he never was. Yeah, well, I'll always be my dad's shadow, and I don't mind that at all, not in the slightest. You know, the end of the day, it's my dad, and for even people doing the comparisons, it, it really don't bother me. If there's anything I'm proud of, I'm proud of my dad and the legacy he's left. Why would I be? Why would I be, get the ump when people tell you in your dad's shadow? Why? Why would that bother me? It don't, and, and never has. What bothers me is when people say you are what you are because of your dad, because that's not the case. But doors have opened, and you know, I've, I've run through them. I haven't let fear hold me back. I haven't let doubt hold me back. I ain't let the naysayers hold me back. That's why I am where I am. You know, and I plan on giving my son the same. Not in boxing, because my son won't fight a million percent. No. Well, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate. Yeah, well, obviously, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Son, yeah, so I should have called him Eli Clay, shouldn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so my son, he, um, <laughs> I plan on giving my son the same life my dad gave me, give my son the same opportunities. And for those who are envious or jealous of that, you know, they're just that way because they couldn't give it to their kids or they didn't get it. You know, my son's going to have a blessed life and I'm going to work extremely hard to make sure that the same doors that have opened for me have opened for him. And you know, I'll make sure that he applies himself. Ain't ha nothing hand out to me. They used to give me 50 pound a week. I used to have to buy home brand, home brand pastas with cheddar cheese and home brand ketchup. And I had that for a week because my dad wanted me to understand the value of money. You know, when I lived in Manchester Hyde, I sent from Sydney, Australia. Yeah, big change. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll teach my son the same values, the same qualities, and you know that's why I am where I am because I work extremely hard. I work like I come from nothing. I work like I didn't go to private school. You know, you, I fight, I fight like that. You never, you never think so, would you? You ain't got to come from the ends to be a great fight. You ain't got to come from the baddest ghettos. You know, it all comes from within it. 
talked about your dad joking about you what season to continental belts and all of it. <laughs> but are you still now dreaming of getting closer and closer to getting a proper one to go and go? Listen, I like my continental belt. <laughs> <laughs> I've defended it six times now. I like my belt. You know, I won a title before my dad won a title, as it happens. He's just a bit jealous because I won my continental before he ever won a title. <laughs> I was young, I'm younger, so. No, I love my continent, but world soon come. It'll, it'll always be that friendly rivalry until I win my second, third world titles. It'll always just dish it out, inducted in the Hall of Fame. Can't compete with it really, can you? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Eddie, there's uh, talk, a lot of talk of you taking uh, a card over to Australia. Any chance of kind of appearing on that? Yeah, I mean, the problem is now he's one of you know one of I said one of our main guys, one of our main draws. So you don't really want to put him on an under. He's kind of I think that ship might sail. But listen, if he turn if he turn around and said, listen, I'd love to go and fight over there. You know, it could be the Haney Canvasus card, co-main. You know, whatever. But he's you know he's doing quite well for himself now in his verses and things like that. And um, you know, we have to really let him fill out arenas because he's on a great run. Um, and I don't see him really fighting on undercards unless it was a mega event like that. But you know, I, I, I see his next fight in the UK. I love, I'd love to see him headline the O2 because I feel like that will be, you know, and obviously big West Ham fan as well. Olympic Stadium, you know, he knows those guys well, and Tony knows, you know, the owners and stuff like that. And that's you have to dream of nights like that. And there's not many fighters in Britain that could do it. He could do it for the world title, no doubt. Paul, why are you so adamant that Eli won't fight when you've had the exact same blueprint and made it work so well? Because my dad was very firm with me growing up. Very, very firm. I mean, almost military. So, there was no compassion, there was no like, affection. Just fine, it's made me who I am now. And you know, I, I thank him for it. My son on the other approach, I told my son be soft, not difficult. Not, oh yeah, 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 yeah. my dad's corner then. No, I rather my son just, Go and mind his own business, get into whatever it is, just I'd rather not have that hardship or have to go through anything. I'd rather just be soft, chill. You know, like my brothers and sisters. They're all like tell me how they live in like cuckoo now. <laughs> <laughs> they too. What have we got at Ellen Lucas? I don't know because it's I feel like it's slowly slowly fizzled out. I'm hoping anyway. But I've always had it in me. When you look, when I look back now, I've always been a, what's the word I'm looking for? I've always been very energetic. I've always been, had that in me. Handful. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. I've always been a handful. <laughs> yes, that's the word. So, and I'm hoping my son ain't, because I'll know. And then, well, I don't know, I used to sing in the church choir, so. I just... <laughs> a bit of a sorry for he lazy, he was he last month, but he lived his life for <laughs> yeah. the fighting, I know. No, he, who knows, you know, I pray to God that he, um, he chooses a you know, different career, because this is a very hard sport and it, and it ain't easy. And I wish my dad told me how hard this sport is, because it ain't, it ain't easy whatsoever, mentally, physically, emotionally, and you either got it or you ain't, you know. Connor, have you watched the knockout back yet? Have you seen how incredible a shot it was? I have, yeah. Yeah. It was a good shot, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a good shot. I was happy with the shot to be honest. But it was, it was to just set up lovely. And everything we've been working on is just taking its course. I mean, we'll, we'll probably still watch that back and go, yeah, could have done this better, could have done that better. Um, and you know, oh, it's time straight away, straight after time you have to around me. Um, you know, because Tom will give me his honest opinion. You know, if I've done something wrong, he'll he tell me. He'll watch it back and then he'll go, Connie, yeah, we need to work on this, we need to work on this. Even when I knock Vargas out in one round, there were still things to work on. There's always room for improvement. And you know, I'm, humbleness is the beginning of knowledge and the beginning of wisdom. So, you know, for as long as I stay humble and, you know, listen to my team, promoter, manager, um, trainer, my dad, you can't really go wrong. At the end of the day, it's not just me. It's, it's my whole team that make me able to do what I do in terms of promotion, in terms of management, in terms of Tony coaching me. It's an all round package that allows me to be the best version of me possible, come fight like physically and mentally. All right, guys. Well done, Connor.